Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I am down in the backyard of my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden in zone 8B. We're in the middle of a heat wave here. It is about 98 degrees out and I am down giving the poultry a little snack. I try and soak their food on hot days and also give them extra greens so they stay really hydrated. As I'm out here working, I, I noticed a couple of exciting things happening in the veggie garden. You would think when temperatures have been 100, 102, 99, that there is not as much going on, that some of the growth slows down and perhaps the garden is experiencing a lot of heat stress. That's not what I'm finding as I am down here this afternoon. So I'm gonna flip the camera and sh around and show you. Um, I'm wearing a shirt that is not safe for um, social media. So I'm trying to keep the camera up here while I'm filming right now, but I'm gonna flip it around um, so that the rest of this video is YouTube safe and show you what's going on. So let's look at how my annual veggie garden is faring in the hot weather. And I've spoken before about how I don't water any of my trees at all. They're all doing fine. They're doing totally fine. I haven't actually found sunburn on anything during this particular heat wave, including not even like on blueberries, which is great. I do water the annual veggie garden only if we are having prolonged hot weather, dry weather. So depending on what's happening that year, that's between zero and six times a year. So far this summer, we have watered twice and this heat wave is lasting like a, a full, over a full week. So that feels acceptable to me. There's a lot of mulch. There are carefully designed swales here, deep, thick humus. And so I find that the plants don't need that much water. And my plants are big and healthy. Look at these Fissilis peruvianus, they're huge. Absolutely huge. I love how velvety the leaves are. And that means that they have big, strong root structures and they don't need to water that much. Again, only water if the plants are struggling because we have prolonged heat. Everything is doing very, very well. I have a lot of dumpster plants from when Ruth worked at Portland Nursery. Hello, I hear you in there. I hear you. Are you upset that I'm in the garden? Juveniles, man. Lots of juvenile birds in the garden right now. That sounds like a scrub jay to me. So I have a lot of, of rescue plants from the dumpster. When she worked at Portland Nursery, um, they had plants that were looking sad and they would put them out by the dumpster and she would take them home. So we've gotten all of our tomatoes except two that way and most of our pumpkins except the ones I started from seed. And you can tell they're all doing really well. These pumpkins, I thought like these are just not these are not gonna make it. A lot of these didn't have labels, and so I don't know what they are, but I can't bear to see a plant go in the dumpster. So when Ruth would message me and say, hey mom, can I bring home this tomato, or can I bring home that summer squash? I would say absolutely go for it. So other things in the annual veggie garden, again, dumpster tomatoes are looking good, getting lots of cherry tomatoes already, enough to have a handful every night with dinner, which is great for July here. Sometimes I don't get them till late August if it's a cool summer. The garden's looking really lush. The paths are starting to get a little overgrown. I mentioned in a previous video, Apollo, my dog broke my favorite summer squash, my black beauty that was cranking out. So that's pretty sad. But when things in general overgrow the path, like you see how there's this borage plant coming up here. If I get volunteers in the path, I just pull them and I use them as chicken feed. They are not a nuisance. It's not a problem in my design. It is an effective part of my design. And speaking of things in the path, as I walk through here, I always keep an eye out for the terminal end of my pumpkins. Pumpkins can grow sometimes more than a foot a day in nice weather. And I just wanna push them back over toward the bed. You go that way, not into the path where someone might step on you and break your brittle stem. I found that, boy, ducks, chickens, and turkeys all love borage, flowers, and leaves. So having these volunteer everywhere provides additional bee forage when they come up in the path because they do like disturbed sunny areas. Then they get pulled when they start to bloom and they go to the poultry. As we wind our way around here, other summer squash, very happy. They love the hot weather. I've been picking loads of summer squash. They love, love, love the hot weather. Winter squash also. These are my um, uh, naked bear pumpkins. They are pepita pumpkins. They're really happy this year. There's another one in here behind all the Fissilis peruviana. Again, great year for Fissilis. Really glad I planted extras of those considering other crops have struggled. 
as I move through the garden along my cattle panel arches, again, when I see the terminal end of a squash, I just take it and I wrap it back around. Let me pan over here slowly, show you on this other side. So this is a tromboncino. You can see the baby here. As the squash kind of can stick out really far, I just gently take them and tuck them around and encourage them to wind the way I want because if this end of your squash breaks, that's it for growth. And these ends can be quite delicate. These hollow stems can get crushed. Speaking of tromboncinos, I've never grown these before and it feels like two days ago they looked like this. And then now look, look at this out of nowhere. Look at this puppy, beautiful. We're gonna keep going here. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Tromboncino, like a trombone, a little bit. It has a bulbous end and a long, long neck. I've never cooked these before. They're kind of um, a really ornamental plant, but definitely edible. Again, dumpster rescue. Indigo rose tomatoes doing well. They are not ready to eat just because they have that purple blush. The bottom needs to turn orange. It won't be ready till it's orange on the bottom. Very happy with how my garden is handling the heat wave. The annual veggies really, really loving the hot weather. I have lots of other annual veggies tucked in around perennials elsewhere in the garden, but I don't water them if we have a heat wave. And again, we're looking at this part of the garden. The U-shaped sun trap allows for this very sunny middle as a great place to grow annuals. But that does mean this area can get dried out more than other parts of the garden, despite the deep mulch, despite the um, swales here. Really pleased everything is doing super happy. Before I let y'all go, in case I get a question, this is some dinosaur kale that is left over and has bolted. Look how tall it's gotten, probably six feet tall. I go ahead and let it bolt because these ends, I either can let it flower and then the pollinators will go for the flowers, or I can just snap off these pieces. You can actually eat all of this. There's no reason you can't eat any of this. It's a myth that it gets bitter when it bolts. But I tend to just save these for poultry forage and then just throw it in there break off little pieces. So just because something is bolting and getting away from me doesn't mean it's not good to eat and it doesn't mean it's not good for the poultry to eat. And they will turn it into eggs. So thank you for watching today. I hope you all are staying cool. I am going to head back into the house and um, probably spend a little bit of time in front of the fan working on something quiet like sewing. If you have a chance, please hop over to my website, parkrosepermaculture.com. I'm still in the process of updating and rebooting that website, but the blog on it is live. So if you go to the main kind of holding landing page and you look in the upper right, it says blog and I am blogging there, pretty much every day. I'm trying to cover the video topics that I'm putting on YouTube and go into like little extra details on the blog. Some things that I don't touch on here, but are relevant or related to the video will be covered in the blog. I also am going back and sharing some of my older videos that are relevant to what's happening in the garden right now. So there might be things that you've missed in years past that pertain to what is happening in the garden this time of year. And I'm gonna dive a little bit more in depth into permaculture design concepts, perhaps more details of my life and more details of the design strategies that I use and some of my thinking that has gone into the design here. Be sure and check out my blog over there and I will be back here tomorrow for my permaculture garden.